Good afternoon, folks. It's Steve Cap. I have JUF. Hope everyone's doing okay out there. Uh, got a different video today. I wanted to go into some new things I've been learning. I recently became a, an extra, and it's kind of piqued my curiosity about a lot of math stuff, uh, residence, frequencies, uh, inductance, reactance, and things of that nature. So what I what I've been doing is I've been doing a lot of kind of learning and trying to work a lot of problems and stuff in my workbook and and so forth. And I wanted to share with you guys some some basic fundamentals that are important. Uh, when you're uh, discussing your system and so forth. And, 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 and what I wanted to talk today about was uh, basically your antenna feed line system and some of the basic uh, math that comes along with some of the engineering that goes into your system. So what we'll do is, uh, like I said, this video demonstrates some math formulas that I've come across and that may help you with your station design and feed line uh, antenna performance. Uh, the SWR is uh, something I'm going to discuss here today. Is a concept that's not often well understood and I have learn some basic elements on the relationships uh, between feed lines and how those can uh, change your SWR numbers and so forth. We'll go over the elements of a balanced radio feed line and antenna combination. Uh, how is voltage and current calculated on the radio? feed line and antenna system. Uh, a little bit of background about where the 468 comes from. Uh, I know that's a number we all use to calculate half-wave dipole antennas and uh, it took me a while to figure out um, exactly where 468 came from and I, I, I figured it out. It has something to do with the speed of light. And lastly we'll talk about uh, wavelength uh, behavior at quarter wave and half wave uh, length intervals and impedance on a transmission line. Uh, starting off with one of the things that's important is whenever you're discussing or engineering your uh, system uh, you want to include the antenna uh, coax feed line and radio as all part of the uh, what I call a system and this system is important because all of these uh, components of the system work together and, and, and changing one can can have an impact on the entire system uh, so it, it's very important to, uh, to to look at this as a system when you're when you're working with it 50 ohms is a common term that you'll see in ham radio. Uh, 75 ohms is another uh, impedance you may have seen on cable TV, cable television, and so forth. Uh, essentially, it's just the impedance or the uh, resistance to the uh, uh, RF alternating current uh, that the uh, uh, physical coax antenna uh, and electronics on your radio. That's the uh, 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 in in uh, Re, not reactance, but impedance that it uh, sh presents to the uh, RF current. A couple of things that were pretty cool that I learned. Uh, it took me a while to figure this out and learn some of this, but uh, if you are curious about how much voltage and current are on your antenna feed line, those, uh, of course, you uh, can determine uh, if you have 100 watts. Uh, you will have all these voltages and currents will be in RMS, uh, root mean squared. So if you have 100 watts on a 50 ohm coax line, you could use this formula here and you would end up, uh, you could determine or, or realize that you have 70 volts uh, alternating current RMS uh, with 1.41 amps. If you had a 1500 watts, uh, you would have, you know, 273 volts RMS at, f at almost 6 amps. So that's, these are the formulas. So if you've got a 50 watt transmitter and you've got a 50 ohm impedance antenna, you can easily figure out how much voltage and current are on the transmission line. Here's another example with 72 ohms. Just plug in the numbers. 300 ohms. Voltage gets a lot higher as you go up in impedance. Voltage goes up, current goes down. And if you're curious on the ohms wheel uh, triangle, there is a, uh, this is where you can actually find this on the ohms wheel. You can solve for current in this little portion here. This portion here, you can sort, you can uh, determine voltage. These are some interesting uh, pieces of information I collected. I just did some random uh, Excel spreadsheets demonstrating the power, for example, if you have a uh, five watt radio, uh, it's going to have 15 volts at three 
32 tenths of an amp. Uh, if you have a 20 watt radio, you'll have 31 volts at uh, 63 or 6, 63 tenths of an amp at 50 ohms. Of course, if you change the coax or the impedance in the uh, antenna feed line system, those voltages are going to go up, the currents are going to go down, but respectively, though, it will still uh, mathematically work. 300, uh, 300 ohms here, you can see 20 watts has uh, you know 77 volts at um, much lower current. And here's the formulas here. And if you took the general, you're familiar with these. Just basically uh, enter the uh, this sign here. I think it's a radical. And then underneath it puts your power, for example, 5 watts here times 50 ohms. And resistance and Z are interchangeable. Uh, if you want to find out the current, put the power uh, under the radical divided by uh, impedance. And that will give you the current on the feed line. So here's some examples at full power. For example, if you're running 1450 watts, you can have up to 269 volts on the feed line. 300 ohms, you can have almost up to 700 volts. Here's some graphs showing some of the different uh, comparisons of uh, looking at voltage. Blue is your power, orange is your voltage. As you can see, the higher the impedance, uh, the voltage just skyrockets. Same thing here. Up to, to 1500 watts, you can have, like I said, almost up to 650 volts on the uh, the the, uh, the feed line. So one of the things that's important is where did the 468 come from? All radio waves travel at the speed of light, uh, three times 10 to the eighth, or 300 uh, million, I guess whatever that is, three and uh, a million meters per second. Uh, and, and of course, the formula there is a formula used to calculate the uh, uh, length of a dipole antenna from the ARRL, and I think this is where this came from, and, and it's pretty pretty well generally known if you take 468 and divide it by the frequency, uh, that will give you the length of a dipole antenna. Uh, so where does a 468 come from? Essentially, you take the speed of light, uh, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, and convert it to feet per second, which comes up to 984 million 252 feet per second for one wavelength to travel uh, past one given point. And what you then have to do is you have to uh, take that 984, which is one full wave cycle, and divide it by two, and you end up with 492, 126 uh, for a half wave cycle. Uh, then what you have to do is you have to go in and you have to introduce a velocity factor, uh, which is added. Uh, and then the velocity factor is a factor that's used when you're uh, introducing a RF signal to a coax or a wire. It's going to slow down a little bit uh, compared to what the speed is in open space or, or a vacuum. So, for example, what you would do then is you would take the 492, uh, and divide it or multiply it times 0.95, which is the velocity factor for just normal 12-gauge uh, wire. That will give you this number here. Uh, and then, of course, that rounds up to 468 million feet per second. So then what happens is the mega, or the 10 to the 6th power, cancels, and you end up with 428 divided by 28.4. So essentially, all of these zeros here cancel because you're at 10 to the 6th power. Mega, or I guess it would be mega here because we're going positive. So it's and you're just left with this number here. And that's where it comes from. So then you would take 468, uh, and then you would divide that by the frequency. Uh, and then, of course, that will include the velocity factor. So for example, on a half-wave antenna, uh, 28.4, uh, 10.5 meters is uh, one wavelength, and then 5.28 is a half wavelength. A couple of things. Uh, all radio waves travel at the speed of light uh, in an open media. Uh, when the power, uh, when the radio power is introduced into a media such as the coax, the speed is reduced by a factor depending on the characteristics of the coax, and this uh, reduction in speed is called a velocity factor and is usually a value from 0.95 to 0.65, depending on the media. A couple of terms I'm going to go over with today are quarter wave inverter. In other words, all impedances at exactly one quarter wave length in, with the velocity factor included in the factoring uh, are inverted. Impedances are inverted. And then, of course, all half wave uh, 
uh, wavelengths are repeated so with the velocity factor and frequency so velocity factor and frequency are constants in all the following slides i'm going to show you because if you change the frequency or the velocity factor all these numbers are going to change so typically what you want to end up with, and this is an ideal situation here if you have a 50 ohm antenna, 50 ohm impedance or coax, and a 50 ohm radio, uh, even with a quarter wave antenna, you're going to have 50 ohms across the entire transmission and delivery line, and that's important. Here's the formula if you want to take uh, to calculate uh, what the impedance would be. You just take the coax impedance and the radio's impedance or, or the antenna's impedance, and then you run this mathematical formula here, and that will give you the impedance that will be visible at the radio. Here's an example of a 72-ohm dipole antenna on a 50-ohm coax. In this configuration, with exactly a quarter wavelength coax with the velocity factor at the frequency of 28.4, what's going to happen now is this antenna is going to have an invert uh, function that will happen, and instead of having 72 ohms, you'll end up with 34 ohms. And again, that's based on this formula here. If you have a 300, 300 ohm antenna, exactly quarter wavelength antenna with the velocity factor at the same frequency this is what's going to happen here you're going to have this 300 ohm antenna is going to look like an 8 ohm antenna so you can see also i'll put the uh, swr numbers here so you can kind of get that's a one to one one to four six to zero so what happens at a half wavelength we repeat the uh, impedance variable so if we have 50 ohms it gets repeated 72 ohms is repeated 300 ohms is repeated. So now what happens is if we have multiple uh, numbers of quarter wavelengths antennas, odd numbers specifically with the same frequency of 28.4 and the same velocity factor, at three or at uh, odd number multiples of a quarter wave, what will end up happening is if you have a 50 ohm in system, you will have 50 ohms. And this is what I talked about earlier with a balanced antenna feed line. No matter how many quarter wave intervals you have, everything is going to be balanced. And that's what we're looking for. This is an ideal situation here. 50, 50, 50 all the way across because all of this, the ratio uh, or the impedance is all the same. So the uh, ratio to voltage to current is all going to be the same. Now, if we have a 75 ohm antenna with three odd multiples of a quarter wavelength, you're going to see something different. At odd multiples, you'll see an impedance inversion, which is 33 ohms, repeat at half wave, and then again a quarter wave, three quarters of a wave, which will be 33 ohms. Remember, every quarter wave, this takes place. So odd number multiples of quarter waves, you're going to see this inversion take place. And again, it's based on this formula here. Here's 125 ohms. Again, three, three quarters or three quarters of a wavelength is going to have this impedance here based on this formula. Now, half wavelength, this is where we're going into the repeater mode again. So everything that's 50 ohms will be 50, 50, 50 all the way across. 75 ohms of course here at a quarter wave it's going to invert to 33 ohms but it doesn't matter because at a half wave we're repeating the impedance that's that's here at this point it's being repeated here at the radio 75 ohms 125 ohms same thing here quarter wave or 20 ohms but if we go to a half a wave we're now repeating that impedance again frequency and wavelength and velocity factor all have to stay the same if you change any of those all this changes so lastly, use quality coax connections, understand the relationship between antenna and impedance, familiarize yourself with reactants and resistance. Uh, the key to having a tuned antenna is to radiate as much power from the radio directly to the resistance of the antenna. Uh, and that's important, and you'll kind of learn, learn about that. Uh, resistance is all about radiation, getting the signal out, and that's what we want. Reactants, uh, capacitance, and inductance and stuff, that just, that just generates heat on the transmission line, and it doesn't actually re uh, result in any power. So frequency has a direct impact on the reactance and resistance. So tuning the SWR signal, uh, you know, back to the radio. I also have a video on the FT991A tuner that I'm going to put a link in. And uh, you can go back and watch that too. And it does give you some examples of how the 991A manages uh, feed line and uh, 
antenna impedances and mismatches and so forth. So anyway, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I hope this is helpful. These are things, these are not directly related to